Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. I'm coming to you from just outside Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C., in our studios is Bebek Yektafar, editor of Washington Prism Magazine. Thanks for joining us, Bebek. Thank you for having me, Paul. So a senior cleric in, in Tehran on Friday, he called for the punishment of the leaders of the protests without mercy. Uh, people are interpreting that as meaning executions. How serious should, is, do you think people will take that threat and what, what impact will it have on the protest movement? Well, the seriousness uh, of, of what's been said on the Friday, Friday prayer, uh, I think, is, is serious enough, although I doubt very much that it would be to the extent that we would see mass executions uh, of one shape or another. My estimation, my guess, is from reading what they're saying right now is that they are going to tie uh, some folks to elements from outside of the country, enemies as they call them, CIA and uh, various security apparatus uh, with Britain and so on and so forth, and some of course with the uh, uh, Iranian opposition group uh, Mujahideen Khal or MKO. And uh, we may see some uh, um, uh, harsh sentences. Uh, but I have a feeling that if this thing kind of quiets down for a little while, uh, the supreme leader, just uh, to be able to, at least in, in his mind, to be able to regain um, uh, some of the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the esteem and authority that, that he's had, uh, and he feels that he may have lost during this whole crisis, uh, he may come out and offer some sort of a pardon or at least a reduction uh, of sentences and essentially say that, you know, uh, uh, these people uh, were uh, puppets of these various uh, uh, foreign forces and uh, they have to learn and I hope everybody else has learned and uh, we will forgive them or, or we will reduce their sentences. So, so I think they would use that um, uh, for that purpose. Now, we know that the CIA had a pretty big budget for interfering in Iran. Uh, do, is there any evidence that and this either the rift within the elite or the movement that's on the streets um, is in some way connected with what they're calling foreign forces? Well, I mean, you can never discount any kind of involvement by some other forces, uh, uh, outside forces inside Iran. Iran, of course, is of immense geopolitical uh, importance uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, but, but be that as it may, I, th I don't want to, to discount uh, uh, um, uh, the, the movement that has come out of this itself, the frustration that people do feel uh, because of what has been taking place in, inside the country for, for 30 years. I mean, even these small valves of pressure that the, uh, uh, the government, the Islamic regime, has uh, allowed people, it seems that even that has been a bit of a mirage for them. Uh, so there was that, and of course what allowed it to, to go on for as long as it has is the second part of it, which is that internal debate that's going on. Um, and that's, that's also serious. I, I doubt very much that um, uh, anything that CIA or any other entity that may be involved with uh, would be that much of, would have that much of an impact on that aspect of it. I can see uh, their involvement as uh, some, some other uprisings in different parts of the country, uh, maybe in some cases the use of some uh, um, uh, uh, you know, guns and, and bombs and things of that nature, but I, I you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make that as the main reason for right. So if you get into, let, let's get into then the current state of things. Let's start with the elite politics because there's elite politics and then there's the politics on the street. Sure. And of course, they're connected to each yes. other, but they also have their own specificity. If one looks at the elite politics and the role of Musavi, Rosanjani. Are we to interpret the events as of today? Uh, has, has the Supreme Leader consolidated his power in the Revolutionary Guard? Have they more or less won this battle? If perhaps we don't know where our, the long-term war ends up, but have they won the battle? Well, they certainly have the upper hand. And I think one of the last reports and news that, that we've heard is the fact that uh, some of the upper echelon uh, uh, of the regime have gathered together. They're trying to put up a bit of pressure on Mr. Rafsanjani 
to come out publicly in support of the supreme leader and the post of a supreme le leadership uh, and, and essentially uh, uh, you know, say that Ayatollah Khamenei is the leader and we all have to listen to him. But he is in a, in a, in a very tight place. He publicly uh, uh, essentially was uh, accused by Mr. Ahmadinejad with, of course, I, you know, I believe a tacit nod from the supreme leader uh, of corruption. Uh, his uh, children have been accused uh, for a very brief period of time. Uh, two of his children, Faiza Hashemi, um, uh, one, his daughter, w were briefly arrested. Uh, so, so he knows that the regime would eventually come after him if this thing dies out the way that it is. On the other hand, he also knows that if he makes some sort of a deal uh, with these powers and back the Supreme Leader at this point, he may lose uh, the support of the people, which at this very moment he feels that it, it's the one arsenal that, that he has. I mean, he doesn't have enough among the, uh, the security forces and among the, uh, uh, the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guards, to be able to combat them. They are a major, major player in what's, what's taking place. So he feels that he at least has the force of the people. And, and if he makes any kind of deal uh, later on, a month, two months, a year from now, when they come after him, and they've made every indication that, that he's a target, uh, he's, he, uh, he fears that then he will not be able to mobilize the people in a way that he has been able to at least help uh, in, in the past two weeks that we've now, seen. Now, the person who's really out on the limb here is Musavi. Uh, can, can the regime allow him to kind of peacefully uh, retire or back up. And, and that being said, he hasn't retired or backed up at all anyway. He no. keeps rejecting the results of the election and he keeps calling on people to maintain the protests. Yes, but I think, you know, we have a very good example of that and that's Ayatollah Montazeri. This is a man who was uh, uh, picked by Ayatollah Khomeini himself uh, to uh, replace him as a supreme leader and take that mantle. And, and just before his death, uh, because of his views, uh, and at the time it was it was considered rather uh, uh, a liberal views uh, uh, of how uh, Islam should be governing this country or, or the Sharia laws should be applied to the, to uh, Iran. Because of those views, he was essentially pushed uh, away and pushed aside. And ironically, Mr. Rafsanjani was one of the people who was involved with that and involved with backing um, uh, Ayatollah Khamenei to, to take that mantle and take, take that position. So using that as an example, and we're kind of seeing signs of that, Mr. Musavi can easily be under house arrest for uh, as long as it takes, um, and, and he can go out and, and, and uh, you know, uh, issue these statements uh, that may uh, provoke some people to go out. But, you know, if they play this out for about a month or so, I'm not sure if, if this movement with a leader that's under house arrest uh, and not much else to, to back it and give it power, uh, I doubt if it will go uh, uh, any right, now, further the, than this. And then, as but, I said, back, Mus but yeah. back, why did it get this far? Bo both Musavi and Rasanjani, they're not people who want the, the, really want the pillars of the system to come down. No. They're both quite invested in, in, in the current uh, power structure. They both have done quite well in the current power structure. Why did the split in the elite get so profound? I think, I think that's a very good question, Paul, because even if you look at the way that people have been protesting, I mean, to begin with, uh, the, the first few days, uh, it was pretty peaceful. It was just essentially rallies, people walking, and essentially it was about one specific issue, and that was uh, they wanted clarity on the voting uh, issue. And, and the whole thing, the way it came about, was extremely suspect. Uh, the way they uh, um, announced Mr. Ahmadinejad as the winner in, in, in such a, a short period of time and, and all that. So, so it, was, it was that, uh, essentially. Uh, and, and, and the reason that that came about, of course, was the fact that, uh, as I said, people felt that uh, something that they were heavily invested and in, involved with uh, uh, was being uh, ignored. But when the protests started to get uh, uh, getting a little bit more violent and, and it went beyond the first couple of days, the type of protests that we saw were very similar to the type that we saw during the revolution. People going on the roofs and saying, Allahu Akbar, you know, God is great. That was the same battle cry uh, for the people who were against the Shah and trying to mobilize people. Uh, and, and nowhere did we ever hear or say that down with the Islamic regime. There were some mostly insulting uh, the President Ahmadinejad. At some point, maybe the leadership. 
but we've never but we never actually saw anything that's that 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 was against the regime itself so that's that's a very good point i don't think anybody went that far so so that's, is is the is the reason why at least amongst the elite and a, a, a different issue for the people on the streets but if if amongst the elite they can't trust the elections as a way to settle differences amongst the elite and 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 if the elite feels like the revolutionary guard and Ahmadinejad simply are getting rid of the electoral process, then it's a kind of coup within the elite. Yes. That's why the division within the elite gets so severe. Am yes, and, and, and that's one aspect of it. Uh, we cannot ignore uh, some of the more personal uh, uh, um, infighting that's going on as well. I mean, we're talking about this set of election. Uh, we shouldn't forget that in the previous round of elections, presidential elections for 2005, there were the same amount of complaints about irregularities and, and even cheating. Even one of the candidates then, who was a candidate in this uh, election, Mr. Karubi, who is known as a reformist, he wrote uh, a very harsh open letter to the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei saying that, you know, I went to bed at night and I was in second place. All of a sudden I wake up and this person named Ahmadinejad has overtaken me going through the second round. Uh, and Mr. Ahmadinejad in the first round finished second to Mr. Rafsanjani in the last uh, presidential election cycle with, with a wide, wide margin. We're talking about six to seven or eight million uh, uh, difference in vote. And all of a sudden, in the second round, uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad uh, just overtakes uh, uh, Mr. Rafsanjani and all the other supposedly reformist votes that he had. So there were complaints back there, too. And it was at that point that this particular rift and we're using the names Rafsanjani and, and Khamenei as, as symbols. They're much more behind them. The role of their children should not be ignored. That's very important. Uh, Mushtaba Khamenei, the son of Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, uh, is, uh, is a major player in what's going on. And he's the one, for example, with the connections with the Revolutionary Guards and Mr. Ahmadinejad. He's a major backer of Mr. Ahmadinejad. So it started really from there. And then when Mr. Rafsanjani, after losing that election, got himself elected, uh, to this council, the Council of Experts, which is the only legal body in Islamic Republic that has constitutional power over the office of supreme leader. When he got himself elected to that and started lobbying people to try to push Ayatollah Khamenei away, Mr. Khamenei, Ayatollah Khamenei, felt a direct challenge to his post and his position. Also, he's very old. Uh, he, has, he has health issues. Uh, and now you have this division of how the future of Islamic uh, uh, Republic of Iran is going to look like if Ayatollah Khamenei is not there anymore. And there is, and there is talk about his son taking, him wanting his son to take his place. Exactly. As the and, but the other thing is that Mr. Rafsanjani, as the head of this particular council, can if, use his influence if, if he can do that. That's what he's been trying to do in the past few couple of weeks, and he will continue to do that. Uh, to exert that influence and pressure uh, to got, get himself uh, uh, into that post of supreme leadership. This is one of the major battles that, that, that's going on uh, among the elite. Thanks very much for joining us, Babette. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.